Today I want to show you how to make a collaborative Makey Makey sensory maze, coding only one key press in Scratch. When you're done, you're going to have something really fun for others to play that should look like this. What did I do? Come on. What do I do? Go on. So, how do you make it? Well, the first thing you're going to have to do is draw the design, and you're going to want to draw two paths when they're pretty close together so that when your players are holding hands, they're making the connection. While you're designing, you're also going to want to research sensory mazes or sensory hallways so you can get some ideas on how you might make this maze very playful. If you have access to a vinyl cutter, it's pretty awesome to create some signs to help your players know what is expected of them as they walk this maze. You can make handprints and feet prints, and as you do these things, you have to try them out yourself while you're putting them together. It's almost like playing Twister. So with this maze, you're actually going to use conductive tape for all of your materials for your players to walk along. And you're going to combine using tape as a single path, which you see here, with tape as shapes. And the key to that is that you want to use one long piece of tape. Continue to press and fold and create that tape. And there's actually a mini tutorial in the guide um, about how to, how to use this big HVAC tape particularly, but you're going to use this tape to lay out your path and then you're going to connect this tape to your conductive shapes with some tape, conductive tape that has a conductive adhesive. That's really important because if it doesn't have conductive adhesive, your maze isn't going to work. So here you can see where I've taken the conductive fabric tape and I've gone from the HVAC to the copper hands to the feet and then added a masking tape on top as an insulator. So whatever shapes you decide, make sure you're always connecting them with the conductive fabric tape and then insulating with the masking tape. I use these specific colors because that would teach my players that if you were player one, you stayed on the purple path, and if you were player two, you stayed on the green path. If you want to make your maze a little tricky, you can even use duct tape to make your paths cross over. Now let me show you real quick how to make the scratch game. So we'll set up a couple of basics. The first thing we need to do is use some if else statements to make music happen when we press the space key. So right now I have if the space key is pressed, play the circus music, otherwise stop the sounds. So I did something here. It doesn't work, why not? Because scratch reads from up to down. So let's add a forever loop and now when I press space, my circus music plays. And that's because my code is always checking. Now it's not stopping. So how can we stop it? We need to tell Scratch to check and see if the key space is not pressed. To do that, we're going to grab another forever loop and an if statement. We get a not block out of the operators, and we want to check, okay, if it is not pressed, I want you to stop the sounds. So this way, when I press the space key, the music starts. When I let up, it stops. So that way, now it's checking, and my players, as they play, will hear, oh, the music isn't playing, I've messed up. My favorite part of making a physical computing project like this is that my computer game can also be cool like my physical game. So I'd like to make my skeleton move. So why I'm just going to make an if key pressed, I want my skeleton to move one step. So now he's moving a step. And if I put this if on edge bounce, that keeps him from falling off the screen. The only thing is, I'd also like him to look like he's walking. In Scratch, most of the sprites come with some costumes. So you can grab the costume and duplicate this switch to costume and wait a second. You have to have that wait or you won't even see the costume. And so now my skeleton's gonna go through A, B, D, and E and look like he's walking. So there he goes. He's walking across the screen when I press space key. So let's see, what do we need to do next? Oh, I know. We need him to drop when the space key is not pressed. To do that, we're going to put this in the else statement. We're going to change his Y. Whoa, where's he going? He's flying. Oh, it's because I'm not pressing the space key. When I'm not pressing the space key, I want him to change his Y by negative 10 and switch his costume to the dropping costume. But I also want to make a funny little sound to give my players the notification that he's dropping. However, this is going really fast. I need to add something else. I'm going to add a weight here for uh, one second so that he drops for a second and then I actually also want his costume to change back otherwise he's not going to look right when he's walking. 
This is actually looking pretty good, but I think that I want the game to end at some point. I want to kind of give this game a Flappy Bird feeling where I want to keep playing this until I get it right. So to do that, I've added this red line at the bottom, it's just Sprite, and I want to have if the skeleton touches this line, I'm going to broadcast the message try again. And I'm using broadcast messages so that I can get the sounds to stop. So I'm broadcasting try again and I'm switching to a new backdrop. And when I'm in that new backdrop, I'm going to stop all the other sounds in this sprite or all the other scripts in this sprite. And now it'll only say game over instead of still having that wobble sound. It took me a while to figure out how to get that code right. So that's how you code it in Scratch. Once you get that done, you're going to hook this up to Makey Makey, uh, Space Key for one player, and Earth for another player. Lay out your mat and get ready for a really fun Steam Day. When you're done, you can fold it all up and pack it away, and maybe you'll inspire some other people to make their own maze. This project and more at ColleenGraves.org.